California kind of resoundly passed this, you know, what people are calling the tough on crime bill, basically recriminalizing. So for the past, whatever, three or some whatever years to any theft that was valued under $950 in the state of California was considered a misdemeanor. So it was pretty much open season. They recriminalized it. And that in California, I just want to enunciate that one more time. In the state of California, they recriminalized um, theft. And there were other states, too, looking at, you know, legalizing or expanding marijuana legislation or rights. And the voters seem to be having second thoughts about that. I think part of the answer here probably, too, is the tempest of the living where people I mean, your state has seen kind of the disaster of traffic accidents and low levels of employment, uh, you know, and all this kind of thing uh, resulting from the passage of legalizing this kind of thing. But um, this makes me tired, too, because it feels like another example of people theoretically saying, oh, I'm for autonomy. People should be able to do what they want. And then it takes, you know, 10 years of people getting really badly hurt and things going super wrong for people to say, oh, well, that was a mistake. Um and it, yeah, that's just exhausting. But I'm, I think you know, it's, it's great a, news. I, I, it is, look, yeah, yeah, and it's great news because it goes along with some things in other parts of the culture. I mean, we've seen the New York Times publish pieces saying, you know, look, we, um, we, we now know more about the harms of marijuana, and they're and they're serious. And you know, the preventative uh, regulatory. Uh, you know, measures to hold back the extreme, you know, uh, forms of uh, of pot and the extra strong versions of it, um, and so on. Uh, you know, that's not keeping up, and 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 there's been a lot of that kind of pushback. And um, there's also the same thing happening right now in sports gambling. And you know, I think yeah, all of this together is basically helping to push back on this kind of incentivizing particularly young males uh, to be perpetual adolescents. And a lot of these kind of freedom measures that have passed state by state over the years, which we did not see in this election, aren't really like you can go have the freedom to be successful. It's ha- you can have the freedom to be an idiot, right? You know, th- this is th- th- this is the incentivizing of, 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 of sports gambling and, and marijuana and, you know, I think there was even a, something on the ballot about hallucinogens in New York, maybe that magic mushrooms that failed, which, of course, it passed well, that in Colorado. Was Massa- Massachusetts. Was that Massachusetts that did that? Yeah. yeah. So it wasn't just. Yeah. So th- th- these are great signs. Like people are starting to realize this. Now, is that part of the trend that was also reflected in the split between men and women on who they voted for for president? That's that's an interesting thing. And you see the kind of the the people that young men look up to now more are the people who are challenging them, you know, um, Anthony Bradley, who I, you know, follow religiously on X because I really believe he is helping me understand a lot of things, particularly about young men and their dads, but also as a, uh, a black s- scholar, he really kind of undoes some of the narratives on, the, the black issue while not just kind of, and he, he's, he always is willing in my mind to go where the, um, the evidence leads. I don't know he's like, you know, what he says, but I, he's just a fascinating thinker and I always have to reckon with it. And he said, you know, president Obama stumping for Kamala Harris basically talked down and lectured, you know, black men as being kind of misogynist and whatever. And he goes, mm-hmm. that's not going to work. And it didn't yeah. work. And there's going to be a reaction to it. And of course, we saw kind of incredible numbers in that community that that moved in another direction. And, and you know, look, I think sometimes Trump airs in his messaging, like, you know, I'll be your savior. I'll be the one who will fix everything rather than, you know, kind of leading the cause. But the voices that are in the conservative movement right now that are speaking to young men are – You know, they're the ones telling them to get up, make your bed and go get a job and don't be a jerk. You know, I feel like Um, I have a this is an opportunity for me. I've been waiting for this my whole life. I could become (laughs) that kind of voice for young men. Is that right? First of all, put your dishes in the dishwasher. Second of all, (laughs) (laughs) 
Are you talking to young men or your daughters? Like I was born just, for this. Is that um, right? I, yeah. or I may or may not be talking to my husband, but go oh, on. Oh, <laughs> dude, you just. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Oh, I'm just kidding. my goodness. Wow. <laughs> um, no, I, I, th- th- there is a crisis of, of a young men and what they're for. We've been talking mm-hmm. about this in various forms for such a long time. And I think there were. It's interesting when you see a political uh, expression of this and maybe I'm too hopeful on the pushback on marijuana. Maybe it was just, you know, connected with the safety issue and connected with the drugs across the border issue in ways that I'm not seeing here. But, I, you know, I'm at least hopeful um, that this kind of uh, the way you fix young men is not by telling them to stop being men. The way you fix young men is by calling them to something bigger and better that God made them for. And, um, you know, maybe there's some indications, uh, you know, here on that. Hey, before we go too, got to give a shout out to West Virginia, West Virginia, uh, voted to ban doctor assisted suicide and, uh, interesting analysis of that. I haven't, you know, you know, we have talked so much about that issue just by looking to Canada. Um, and I guess what I had lost track of is since uh, a few years back, and really since Canada really kind of embraced doctor assisted suicide and started going down that slippery slope faster than any nation we'd ever seen in history, in the United States, that issue has really slowed down. There's really been a pushback on that. Now, th- there hasn't been much political action either advancing it or restricting it, but West Virginia is the first state to say, we're not going to do that here. Yeah. And that's great. Yeah. Um so I think that uh, that needs to be at least mentioned. Um, and I wonder if there is momentum here because I, I think I'm, I'm, I'm always hesitant to kind of claim we have a moral majority or the majority of people really think this about abortion or that about abortion. Cause I think almost all of our guesses have been wrong on that. Um, and all of our proclamations of kind of we're more moral than we think we are is are wrong. I'm hopeful on this one because, and it may be just the horror of watching, you know, people with PTSD in Canada get greenlit or autism and younger and younger and younger and younger and younger in the name of freedom and to see the pressure that's put on by the system, you know, a state run system that basically will cover drugs for dying early, but will not cover drugs for taking care of the the condition that one has. You know, you start seeing these headlines and you're like, oh, yeah, this is not what we want here. So that's that's encouraging. Praise God. Yeah, that is really encouraging. 